There is just one day left for early voting before voters head to the polls on Tuesday. But the right to even be able to vote wasn't always given and for some people was downright dangerous. Aaron Rodgers takes a look at voter suppression throughout history. Take a look. We have gotten pretty used to seeing lines like this in Georgia. People tell us they've sometimes waited hours just to vote. Well, I spoke to a Macon woman about why her family history drives her to the polls and former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams about what voter suppression looks like in the 21st century. He went and voted and he was gunned down. Voting for Cassandra Jones de Sazier. I feel like it's a matter of life and death. I really do. See, her step-grandfather, Maceo Snipes, a World War II veteran, was the first black person to walk through the doors of the Taylor County Courthouse and cast his ballot for Georgia's governor in 1946. But that was after Snipes' family says the sheriff in town gave a warning. It said that if any blacks come to vote, that they would be killed. One day after that vote, several men showed up to Snipes' home. And this newspaper clipping from that year says that's when Edward Cooper shot him. My recollection of what my grandmother told me is that the hospital was so far and he walked and when he got to the hospital, you know, he had lost so much blood and they didn't have any color blood to give him. And he bled to death basically and he died. Can you just talk about like what brings you to tears about saying get out and vote? Because I know he's my, my step friend that lost his life, but there are so many other people that lost their lives and died and they paved the way for us to be able to do this. One person who doesn't take the responsibility of voting lightly is former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams. After she narrowly lost the governor's seat, she dedicated her career to voting rights, creating her voting organization, Fair Fight Action. It may take different forms, but voter suppression has been around since the beginning of this country. And it has three pieces. Can you register and stay on the rolls? Can you cast your ballot and does your ballot get counted? What preceded the Voting Rights Act was a very violent approach to imposing those three impediments to the right to vote. But what we have found in the 21st century is that those same attacks on our right to vote look like administrative rules. They look like bureaucratic barriers. They look like user error. But what we need to understand is that often it's not you. It is them. It is the system. One way she told me you can overcome that. If we want voting to be easier this cycle, if we want election day to be the right uh, process, and if we want election season, which is really what we have here in Georgia, to go smoothly, the best, you know, the best weapon that we have is making a plan to vote. What would you say to that unenthused voter? I don't think you have to be enthusiastic about the person. You have to be enthusiastic about the possibility. A possibility Jones de Sazier's ancestor never saw and why she so firmly believes. Make the choice, the decision to vote. Snipes murder did spur a sophomore at Morehouse College to write a letter about basic rights to the Atlanta Constitution newspaper, which we now know as the AJC. Well, that college student was Martin Luther King Jr. Back to you. Snipes killer never faced any charges. His story is also featured in a documentary produced by Stacey Abrams called All In, The Fight for Democracy. You can find it right now on Amazon Prime.